Here's a mistake that is very common in the workplace, what I call excessive work. And I wanted to uh, talk about this one because this is one of my favorite horror stories. I, I call this my all time classic of just how far off track we can get with all good intentions. This is the code I would like to walk through. And, and we're not gonna walk through it in bulk like this because it's just hard to actually comprehend. We're gonna break it down in little pieces. But you can see there at the top, this procedure is called string check. Now let's break down the code to actually into, into simple um, small chunks to actually see what this particular routine is doing. So I focused here on lines 12 through 18. And what it's actually doing, it's going from 1 to 45, and then you can see on 16 from 58 to 255. Those numbers are significant because if we map them to the ASCII codes, 1 to 45 and 58 to 255 is all the characters in your standard ASCII character set that don't include the numbers. So we're effectively building a string here of about 240 characters long, which is all the characters except the numerics, except 0 through 9. If we go look at 19 lines 19 through 22. We have this list now of 240 characters. We're going to iterate through each character and to extract each character what we're going to do is do a select substring from Joule to actually get the first character, the second character, the third character, etc, etc. Once we've got that character, we then go look at our incoming text. So line 9 there is the text that's coming in. We're going to look inside that text for the particular character we've just extracted from the previous slide. So see if that character is found inside the incoming parameter called ptext using an in string from Joule. Now already you're probably thinking this seems a bit odd, like what, what is the function here? So we finally get to the end of the thing, which is if we did find any occurrences of particular characters, we return a one, otherwise we return a zero. That's a very quick run through a code if we're doing a code review. So let's actually see what it's actually designed to do. So to help us out here, I thought I'd actually show the, the code flow with a little bit of uh, PowerPoint animation. As I said, this is the character list we've built. It's all the characters except the numbers. So I've truncated it here, but you get the idea. It starts with a space, and then we've got the caps, the lowercase, and then all the symbols, all, all 255 US 7 ASCII characters minus the numbers. And someone calls string check 178. So the first thing I do is I take that 178, that's my incoming parameter, and I say, let's get the first, first character from character list, that's the A. And then I do an in string, is there an A in 178? Yes or no? And then I get the second character, that's B. And then I run an in string, is there a B in 178? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did I do three? I did, so then we use C. Is C in 178? And we continue on and on and on through the entire string. What is this doing? What, what, what is the purpose of this function? Once we've gone through all those characters, we actually send a return value. And so when I ran this function to see what was going on, if I call string check with one, two, three, it returns a zero. If I pass a number, I return a zero. If I pass something that contains a non-numeric digit, it returns a one. Yes, it is a check if the input is numeric function. That's how someone wrote this. And that was my first question. In fact, to set the tone here, I got asked to come in to visit a customer to see what, because they were having enormous CPU performance problems. And this is what was this effectively, this function that was built was used everywhere. They had a number of external systems that were providing information to them. And for every fragment of information that provided data, and some of that data needed to be numeric, they would call this string check before allowing it into their system. It was a data checking cleansing routine. So every execution was doing 244 select substring calls from Joule and 244 select in string calls from Joule. And even putting aside this code, this is actually a really common coding error I see, a lot of people think that to do simple arithmetic expressions in PL SQL requires a select from Joule. And I think this is a hangover from the days where you couldn't get things like sequence numbers directly in PL SQL. So people would do, oh, if I can't get a sequence number, I have to do select sequence number next hour from Joule. 
So therefore, if I need to do a substring, well, I might to do a substring from dual, an instring, instring from dual, etc. This is what they were observing. They said, we are having all sorts of problems. Our machine is absolutely pegged to the wall with CPU, and they couldn't work out why. And funnily enough, that's why they called me, and I went in there to, um, to help them out. And this is a common query I run when I get called into a sort of a customer site blind. They're saying, we got problems, what do we do? Unless there's Oracle bugs, the vast majority of all performance problems are due to bad SQL. So if your CPU is getting maxed out, the most common thing you will look for is what are the queries that are running the most logical I.O., which is buffer gets, because buffer gets pretty much is a mapping toward CPU consumption in the Oracle database. So I run this typical query, SQL text buffer gets executions from $3 SQL stats, buffer gets greater than a million. Quick sidebar here, if you currently have queries that query V$ SQL, generally a drop-in replacement is V$ SQL stats. Um, there's also a V$ SQL stats with child, I think, or with plan hash, two views there. But use them instead, because when you query V$ SQL, you're smashing some latching that protects the library cache. So your attempt to find out what's going wrong actually might make things worse. Whereas querying VDollar SQL stats is a separate memory structure. You can query that much more aggressively and you're not going to have dramas. So it's a really cool thing um, if you've got VDollar SQL queries to actually replace them with VDollar SQL stats where possible. Before I went and found that string check procedure, the first thing I saw when I went to this customer site, I said, oh, I run my query and actually this is what I saw. This was the first clue that maybe something was amiss, is my standard query I had refactored the buffer gets and executions columns too narrow to fit the size of the numbers that was coming back because they were literally doing billions and upon billions of select substring from dual, instring from dual. This is where I went and met the customer. I said, we have an is number function. Like, why did you write a function called string check? And, and as people will know, in fact, or maybe people don't know this one, if you're on 12C and above, we actually have it natively in the kernel. You can actually do the validate conversion in both SQL or PL SQL, which simply says, take a number and it'll return one or zero, depending on whether something can be cast correctly. So you can see there, p-text in as number. I take that value, I say, try, convert it to a number and validate that conversion. If the, if the conversion is correct, return zero, otherwise return one. Might be the other way around, but either way, you get the idea. So that's a trivial way of doing it literally in C code. Similarly, if you actually want to get that number back if it is valid, then you can use the cast function. All the, um, the normal functions that deal with string expressions or expressions that involve a data type conversion all have this now default on conversion error extension. So in this case, I take ptext in as a number. I can actually say convert it to a number. If it converts fine, give me the number. If it doesn't convert fine, return me, in this case, for example, minus one. But cast has that, two char has that, two date has that, two number, two timestamp, etc. All these facilities now have the ability to return a default value as a flag of saying, yep, I couldn't do the conversion you requested. Those facilities are all there. In fact, even in pre before 12C, which when these really cool functions came along, you could still do it far more efficiently than that string check routine. This is the, probably the most common routine and that this is what I actually implemented for them to solve this problem. Take a number in, try convert it to a number. If I can't convert it to a number, then return zero, otherwise return one. It's still a pill SQL call from SQL, but it's far more efficient than doing 488 selects from dual from within a pill SQL routine. The obvious thing is I say, why didn't you use this? And of course, the developers, I didn't know there was a two number function. Well, they knew about two number, but they didn't know how they could capture it to actually avoid the thing crashing. Their objective was to effectively preemptively see if something was numeric and not have a crash. Two number delivered by default without the 12C extensions didn't suit that need. So they thought they'd write their own. But I suppose the key thing here is, and as I said, I'm not trying to belittle the developer who wrote this, is the importance of load testing when it comes to looking for excessive work. Because that function works fine for 10 calls. It'll be, you know, literally just a few milliseconds. It'll be fine for 100 calls, maybe 10 milliseconds. It'll be fine for 1,000 calls. It'll still be sub-second. What it won't be is fine for millions of calls. So it's so important to do some realistic load testing when you build functions that are going to sit certainly deep down in the core of your applications.
Uh, very, very important. Load testing is going to reveal when you have excessive costs that don't appear to be there, excessive work that don't appear to be there on first glance. This is my motto, infinity times anything is always infinity. It doesn't matter how cheap a single execution of something is, if you run it an infinite number of times, you're probably going to get yourself into trouble.